assalamu alaikum class welcome to the uh, series of online lectures on fundamentals of genetics bio 231 and today we are going to start our new lecture on uh, sex determination and sex linked influenced inheritance so let's just briefly look at the course content that we have covered so far and what we are going to do today you all know that we have completed the study of life which includes a brief introduction to biology and genetics chemical foundations of life cell structure, cell division, mitosis and meiosis, biological macromolecules, replication, transcription, translation and types of RNA. In our online lectures, we have covered Mendelian genetics, Mendel's law of segregation and dominance as well as law of independent assortment. And in the previous three lectures, we have covered the extensions and modifications of Mendel laws. In today's lecture, we are going to study about sex determination and this series of lectures would include not only sex determination, but also sex linked and sex influenced inheritance. Sex determination and sex linked characteristics. Now, before we actually start our lecture today, let me just get you familiarized with a few of the terms that I'll be using in this lecture. So, first of all, we have hemizygous. That's a condition of having some single copies of the gene in an otherwise diploid cell or an organism. Then I'll be using the term of X-linked genes or the YLM genes or a trait. Well, X-linked trait is a trait that is associated with the X chromosome, while the Y-linked trait or gene is the one which is associated with the Y chromosome. Sex chromosomes. That's a chromosome involved in determining the sex of an organism, typically one of the two kinds, either X or Y. Heterogametic, an individual that is capable of producing two types of gametes. For example, in case of human, human males, they are heterogametic because they are producing two types of sperms. One sperm containing an X chromosome and the other one containing a Y chromosome. Then we have the term homogametic, individual that is capable of producing only one type of gamete. For example, all the eggs produced by the human females, they all carry an X chromosome. Then we have this term karyotype. This is actually a simple picture of a person's or an individual's chromosome. Then the term aneuploidy, it is the presence of an abnormal number of chromosome in a cell. And then we have hermaphrodites. These are the individuals that are born with both male and female gonades. So first of all, the objectives of today's lecture. We're going to learn about sex determination and we will also distinguish between sex link traits and other forms of inheritance. Whether an animal will become a male or a female or a hermaphrodite is determined very early in their development. Scientists have worked for hundreds of years to understand the sex determination system. For example, in 335 BC, Aristotle proposed that the heat of the male partner was responsible for determining the sex. If the male's heat could overwhelm the female's coldness, then a male child would be formed. In contrast, if the female's coldness was too strong, a female child would be formed. Environmental theories of sex determination, such as that of Aristotle's, were popular until early 1900, when sex chromosomes were discovered. As it turns out, Aristotle was onto something, at least in the case of some reptiles, in which the temperature of the nest determines the sex of the embryo. For most of the animal, however, sex is determined chromosomally. Sex determination results in the development of the individuals with characteristics that allow them to be identified as males, females, or in some cases, hermaphrodites. In certain species like the solid nematode C. elegans, differences in sexual characteristics can be very small. In other species, the phenotypic differences between the sexes can be quite significant. Consider, for example, the remarkable plumage and display of the tom turkey versus the rather plain feathered of the female turkey. Female and the male mammals are also readily distinguishable by many differences in their internal and external phenotype, behavior, and metabolism. 
The first major breakthrough in understanding sex determination was the discovery of the sex chromosome in the early 1900s. For analysis of the male and female insect chromosomes, scientists discovered that although most chromosomes were present in equal numbers in both males and females, there were one or two additional chromosomes that were unequally represented in the two sexes. Analysis of the additional species over the years have revealed that chromosomal differences are primarily responsible for sex determination in most animals. In humans as well as in many other animals and some plants, the sex of the individual is determined by the presence of a sex chromosome. However, there are other sex determination systems in the nature as well. For example, temperature dependent sex determination is relatively common and there are many other types of environmental sex determination. Some species such as snail practice sex change, adult starts out male, then it becomes a female. In tropical clownfish, for example, the dominant individual in a group becomes a female, while the all others of them are male. In this figure, you can see human male karyotype. A human male possesses an X and a Y chromosome, as you can see on the bottom of this karyotype in the red box. The Y chromosome is much shorter than the X chromosome, unlike all of the other homologous chromosomes pair. The sex chromosomes are one of the non-homologous chromosomes. Until now, we have only considered inheritance patterns among non-sex chromosomes or the autosomes. In addition to the 22 homologous pairs of autosomes, human females have a homologous pair of X chromosome, whereas human males have an X and a Y chromosome pair. Although the Y chromosome contains a small region of similarity to the X chromosome so that they can pair during meiosis, the Y chromosome is much shorter and contains very less number of genes. When a gene is being examined, it is present on the X chromosome but not on the Y chromosome, it is said to be an X-linked gene. Here is a comparison between the X and the Y chromosomes. You see that in both chromosomes, they have a short arm and then they have long arms. In the short arm and in the long arm of both chromosomes, you see a pseudo-autosomal region. That pseudo-autosomal region is actually the region which is common between the X and Y chromosome. The X and Y chromosomes are homologues only at these regions and therefore they are essential for the pairing of the chromosome during the process of meiosis in the male, for example. On the right side, you see only the Y chromosome. The blue band that you see on the short arm, this is the sex determining region on the Y chromosome or SRY gene. This gene Y is linked because it is found only in the Y chromosomes. Now let's look at the most common sex determination mechanisms which are present in plants and animals and even in uh, protozoans. So we have three types of mechanisms. We have chromosomal sex determination system, we have genic sex determination system, and then we have environmental sex determination system. The XX or XY sex determination system, which is the chromosomal sex determination system, is the most familiar one, at least as it is found in the humans. The XX or XY system is found in most of other mammals as well as in some insects. In this system, most females have two of the same kind of chromosomes, XX, while most of the males have two distinct sex chromosomes, X and Y. The X and Y chromosomes are different in their shape and their size from each other and unlike the rest of the chromosomes, which are actually the autosomes, and they are sometimes called allosomes. Genic sex determination system is the one in which genic sex determination is determined by genes, but the chromosomes of the males and the females are indistinguishable. And then we have environmental sex determination, this is the process in which the sex is determined fully or in part by the effect of different environmental factors. So first of all, we are going to look at chromosomal sex determination system. So first of all, look at sex determination in case of mammals. 
and this system as I told you is also called the XX or XY system. In placental mammal, the presence of the Y chromosome determines this X. Normally, cells from the females contain two X chromosomes and the cell from the male contain an X and a Y chromosome. Occasionally, individuals are born with sex chromosome which uh, may, be, may have some aneuploidies or some abnormalities and the sex of these individuals is always determined by the absence or presence of the Y chromosome. Thus, if an individual has 47 total chromosomes with 2 X chromosome and 1 Y chromosome or 47 chromosome containing 1 X and 2 Y chromosome karyotypes, they are going to be a male. While individuals which are born with just 45 chromosomes and contain just one X chromosome or 47 chromosomes and containing three X chromosomes, they are all going to be females. Humans are able to tolerate this supernumerary numbers of the sex chromosome because of X inactivation and the fact that the human Y chromosome is quite gene poor. Although the role of the Y chromosome in mammalian sex determination has been known since the early 20th century, it was not until 1959 that the scientists were able to identify the region of the Y chromosome that controlled this process. Later, researcher David C. Page analyzed the chromosomes of the sex reversed XX men. These were rare individuals who look like men but have two X chromosomes instead of one X chromosome and one Y chromosome. Using DNA hybridization with probes corresponding to different regions of the Y chromosome, Page discovered the sex reversed male carried genes from about 140 kilobase region on the short arm of the Y chromosome. This region presumably had been transferred to the X chromosome during a translocation process. Subsequent experiment narrowed down that this region and found that one gene, which is called the sex determining region on the Y chromosome or the SRY gene, was the master regulator of sex determination. The presence of just this region from the Y chromosome is thus sufficient to cause male development. Let's look at another example of a chromosomal mechanism of sex determination and the example is of Drosophila melanogaster. The sex chromosome of the fruit fly Drosophila melanogaster have played a particularly important role in our understanding of genetics. Therefore, it may come to us as a surprise that the fruit flies are relatively rare using a mechanism which is quite rare to determine their sex. In fact, Drosophila, sex is primarily de determined by the ratio of the X chromosomes to the ratio of the sets of autosomes. The balance between female determining factor encoded on the X chromosome and on the male determining factor encoded on the autosome determines which sex specific pattern of transcription will be initiated. Therefore, XX, XXY and a XXYY fly is a female while XY and XO flies are males. Flies are unable to survive with more than two copies of an X chromosome because of the mechanism that they use for dosage compensation. Now what is dosage compensation? Dosage compensation refers to the process by which animals equalize the amount of gene product generated from the X linked genes in males and females. Unlike in mammals, all of the Drosophila's X chromosomes remain active and flies adjust the level of the X-linked gene products by doubling the expression from the X chromosome in case of male. An extra copy of the X chromosome which contains close to one-third of the fly gene creates a aneuploidy and this greatly disturbs the equilibrium in the cells. Drosophila sex determination also differs from mammalian sex determination in several other ways. First, sex determination begins immediately at fertilization and there is no dif indifferent period. Furthermore, hormones are not responsible for sex-specific trait. Instead, each cell in the embryo senses that there is, an, there is a certain ratio of the X to the uh, autosomes which triggers either the female or the male-specific patterns of transcription. Microarray experiments indicate that the sex-specific differences in gene expressions are quite extensive. 
In fact, roughly we can say that 30% of the Drosophila genes are found to show sex-specific bias in their expression. Sex determination in birds, the Z and W chromosomes. In birds, sex is determined by the chromosome known as the Z and W chromosomes, and the females are the heterogametic sex. Early on, it was apparent that there was notable differences in the mechanisms used by sex determination in case of birds and mammals. Working with chickens, scientists were unable to find a counterpart of the sex determining region on the Y chromosome gene required for the mammalian testes determination. So they searched for homologues of the other gene that were required for the testes formation in mammals. These investigations led to the discovery of the DMRT1 gene on the chicken's Z chromosome. In mammals, the DMRT1 gene product is a critical member of the testis forming pathway initiated by sex determining region on the Y chromosome or the SRY gene. Two copies of this DMRT1 gene are necessary for testis development and even in the presence of the SRY gene. In mammal, both sexes have two copies of DMRT1 because it is located on an autosome, which is actually chromosome number 9. In the development, even in the presence of the SRY gene, chickens by contrast only male possess two copies of DMRT1 as it is located on the Z chromosome. The actual trigger for deactivating the testis forming pathway in the chicken remains unknown. Birds also differ significantly from the mammals in that the two unique genes on the W chromosome, which is called the FET1 and ASW, are necessary for female development. The function of FET1 is unknown, but it is expressed in the gonads, leading to the time of sexual differentiation. In mammals, chickens also have, uh, like mammals, chickens also have uh, indifferent gonad until uh, uh, around day or four of their development, after which an ovary or a testis starts to develop. Hormones then orchestrate the development of other sex specific characteristics. Now, in contrast with the mammals, however, estrogen is required early in the sex determination in chicken and uh, is uh, in fact necessary for the formation of the ovary. In fact, genetically male chickens can be converted to the females if the eggs are injected with estrogen at a sensitive stage of development. The ZZ, ZW mechanism of sex determination is not restricted to the birds. Within the vertebrate, a similar system of sex determination has been identified in reptile as well as in some of the fishes and amphibians. Sex determination in insects. Insects are the most diverse class of the organisms on the planet, so it is not too surprising that they show considerable diversity in their mechanism for sex determination. However, like most other animals, the majority of the insects have dimorphic sex chromosomes that can be distinguished cytologically, which means that they are different physically. Animals with two different sex chromosomes are of heterogametic sex and thus they are able to produce two types of gametes. Conversely, members of the homogametic sex can produce only one type of gametes. For example, in case of humans, as well as in many other animals, males generally have one X chromosome and one Y chromosome. Therefore, they are heterogametic, producing two types of gametes. While females have two X chromosomes, this system is reversed in butterflies and moth females. And the, uh, in the, this case, the females are heterogametic sex while males are homogametic. The sex chromosome in butterflies and moths are designated as W and Z. W chromosome is usually associated with the development of a female character. When the W chromosome is absent, ZZ develops into a male and ZO develops into a female. Having a W chromosome to develop as a female isn't even a necessity for some species. A moth species use the ambient temperature to control sex determination in the absence of a W chromosome. When temperatures are warm, the Z chromosome is found to be on the inner spindle and more female eggs are produced. 
whereas in the colder condition, the Z chromosome moves to the outer pole, resulting in greater production of the males. This system actually corresponds to the adaptive changes of the which are advantages in favor of the production of the female offsprings when uh, the conditions are good and warm and the resources from the uh, subsequent production are more likely to be like available. Now, in case of grasshoppers, some grasshoppers also use a single uh, chromosome, for example, XX or XO system for sex determination. Here, the males have only one sex chromosome, so they are considered to be XO. Therefore, males are heterogametic sex because they produce two different kinds of gametes. One gamete containing X and the other gamete containing no sex chromosome or O. The system of chromosomal sex determinations is even uh, further reduced in certain genera of mosquitoes in which the two sexes are chromosomally indistinguishable. Sex in the homogametic group is thought to be determined by a dominant male determining factor. The genic sex determining system in case of the genic sex determining system, sex is determined by genes at one or more locus. Sex is genetically determined, but there are no obvious differences in the chromosomes of the males and females. There are no sex chromosomes. And examples are some plants, fungi, protozoans, and fishes. Environmental sex determination. Environmental sex determination. As previously mentioned in the discussion, environmental factors can sometimes play an important role in sex determination. Insects are not so special case because among the vertebrate, temperature also has a strong influence on sex determination in certain groups of reptiles. For example, in uh, crocodile and many other reptiles, for example, like in turtle, sex is determined by egg incubation temperature. There are several variations to this theme. In the alligator snapping turtle, incubation of the eggs below 22 degrees centigrade or above 28 degrees centigrade gives rise to female, while incubation at intermediate temperature produces males. American alligator shows a similar dependence on temperature, but the curve is shifted to a higher temperature. In the European pond turtle, incubation temperature above 30 degrees centigrade produces all the females, whereas incubation temperature below 25 degrees centigrade produces all males. At 28 degrees centigrade, equal number of males and females are produced. The temperature-dependent component of the sex determination pathway has been studied in great detail in the European turtle. In this turtle, the critical temperature dependent component appears to be synthesis of the enzyme aromatase, which converts an androgen such as a testosterone into estrogen. At higher temperature, increased activity of this enzyme produces more estrogen, which biases the sex ratio towards more females. As one compared the various mechanisms of sex determination among species, it is clear that the evolution has produced numerous solutions for generating different sexes. Sexual reproduction has tremendous adaptive value to the species because it introduces new genetic variability into the population in each new generation. Chromosomes play de determinative roles in most species. But even so, environmental factors induce additional wrinkles into the developmental processes. Besides temperature, social factors may also be involved in determining the sex of some organisms. A good example is a clownfish, where if the dominant female dies, the male partner becomes a female. How does this happen? Let's watch this in a very informative video on clownfish. My name is Justin Rhodes and I study behavioral neuroscience. We've chosen a, a model organism that shows a very dramatic example of social environment having a long-lasting impact on the behavior and physiology of the organism as a model system to understand how the brain orchestrates this. And these are clownfish which change sex depending on the social environment. We have clownfish paired off in 26 tanks one male, one female, and maybe a couple of, of, of other smaller, undifferentiated fish 
living on sea anemones. And the larger one is always female, dominant. And this, the second in the hierarchy is the male. And if you remove the female, then the male will change sex and become female in a matter of a couple of months. And basically, this is through the brain interpreting this social change. The clownfish has both testicular tissue and ovarian tissue. And so it's a matter of just encouraging one of the other tissues to develop. It's unclear exactly what signals they're using, probably mostly vision, and maybe some olfaction, and maybe even sound. And then that probably communicates to the hypothalamus in the areas of the brain that we know communicate to the pituitary gland, which is a little gland right below the brain, which releases hormones into the blood, which communicate to the gonads, causing testes to absorb and ovaries to develop and morphology to change and completely reverse the behaviors because this used to be a male and now it's dominant and behaving like a female and so on. One hypothesis is that a sex change will involve some reorganization of the brain and we can measure and track when we remove the female and observe what changes take place in the brain of that male changing sex into female, we can see what areas of the brain are sprouting new neurons or what areas of the brain are removing new neurons. We can discover then how in this one dramatic example of how the social environment reorganizes behavior and presumably makes some inferences. The two human implications potentially are humans also have a similar you know, they don't change sex, but social environment can have long-lasting effects on their behavior personality. Presumably this involves similar biology. Another potential implication of this work is identifying changes in the brain that apparently are necessary to function as a female versus a male. If you measure male and female brains, you see differences. The question is, which of those differences are functional? What are the neuroanatomical or physiological difference between a male and a female brain that makes males behave like males and females behave like females. It's difficult to know when you compare males and females in, in different species. But in a sex-changing fish, presumably those changes that are actually undergoing reorganization, new neurons sprouting up in one area, neurons degrading in another area, those are most likely to be functional because that's going to be very energetically costly to the animal to start rearranging the brain and in connections and so on. Now to summarize everything that we have learned so far in this series of lecture related to sex determination and sex linked inheritance, I found a very nice video which is actually summarizing all the points that were discussed today. So let's watch that. My wife is pregnant right now with our first child. And when people see her with her big baby bump, the first question people ask almost without fail is, is it a boy or is it a girl? Now, there are some assumptions behind that question that we take for granted because of our familiarity with our own human biology. For human babies, we take it for granted that there is a 50-50 chance of either answer, boy or girl. But why is it that way? Well, the answer depends on the sex determination system that has evolved for our species. You see, for most mammals, the sex of a baby is determined genetically with the XY chromosome system. Mammals have a pair of sex chromosomes, one passed down from mom and one from dad. A pair of X's gives us a girl, and an X and a Y together gives us a boy. Since females only have X's to pass on in their egg cells, and males can give either an X or a Y in their sperm cells, the sex is determined by the father, and the chance of producing a male or a female is 50-50. This system has worked well for mammals, but throughout the tree of life, we can see other systems that have worked just as well for other animals. There are other groups of animals that also have genetic sex determination, but their systems can be pretty different from ours. Birds and some reptiles have their sex genetically determined, but instead of the sex being determined by dad, their sex is determined by mom. In those groups, a pair of Z sex chromosomes produces a male. So these males only have Zs to give. However, in these animals, one Z and one W chromosome together as a pair produces a female. In this system, the chance of a male or a female is still 50-50. It just depends on whether mom puts a Z or a W into her egg. Certain groups have taken genetic sex determination in completely other directions. Ants, for example, have one of the most interesting systems for determining sex. And because of it, if you are a male ant, you do not have a father. In an ant colony, there are dramatic divisions of labor. There are soldiers that defend the colony. There are workers that collect food, clean the nest, and care for the young. And there's a queen and a small group of male reproductives. 
Now the queen will mate and then store sperm from the males. And this is where the system gets really interesting. If the queen uses the stored sperm to fertilize an egg, then that egg will grow up to become female. However, if she lays an egg without fertilizing it, then that egg will still grow up to be an ant, but it will always be a male. So you see, it's impossible for male ants to have fathers. And male ants live their life like this with only one copy of every gene, much like a walking sex cell. This system is called the haplodiploid system, and we see it not only in ants, but also in other highly social insects like bees and wasps. Since our own sex is determined by genes, and we do know of these other animals that have their sex determined by genes, it's easy to assume that for all animals, the sex of their babies still must be determined by genetics. However, for some animals, the question of whether it will be a boy or a girl has nothing to do with genes at all, and it can depend on something like the weather. These are animals like alligators and most turtles. In these animals, the sex of an embryo in a developing egg is determined by the temperature. In these species, the sex of the baby is not yet determined when the egg is laid, and it remains undetermined until sometime in the middle of the overall development period when a critical time is reached. And during this time, the sex is completely determined by temperature in the nest. In painted turtles, for example, warm temperatures above the critical temperature will produce females within the eggs, and cool temperatures will produce a male. I'm not really sure who came up with this mnemonic, but you can remember that when it comes to painted turtles, they are all hot chicks and cool dudes. For some tropical fish, the question of will it be a boy or will it be a girl isn't settled until even later in life. You see, clownfish all start out their lives as males. However, as they mature, they become female. They also spend their lives in small groups with a strict dominance hierarchy where only the most dominant male and female reproduce. And amazingly, if the dominant female in the group dies, the largest and most dominant male will then quickly become female and take her place and all the other males will move up one rank in the hierarchy. In another very different ocean animal, the green spoonworm, the sex of the babies is determined by a completely different aspect of the environment. For this species, it is simply a matter of where a larva happens to randomly fall on the sea floor. If a larva lands on the open sea floor, then it will become a female. But if it lands on top of a female, then it will become a male. So for some species, the question of boy or girl is answered by genetics. For others, it's answered by the environment. And for others still, they don't even bother with the question at all. Take whiptail lizards, for example. For those desert lizards, the answer is easy. It's a girl. It's always a girl. They are a nearly all female species. And although they still lay eggs, these eggs hatch out female clones of themselves. So will it be a girl or will it be a boy? Throughout the entire animal kingdom, it does really all depend on the system of sex determination. For humans, that system is a genetic XY system. And for me and my wife, we found out it's gonna be a baby boy. Since we have completed our lecture on the uh, sex determination, uh, here is your class assignment. So in your class assignment, first of all, let me tell you what is prenatal testing. It's the method of uh, finding out the sex of the individual before that individual is born. One of the method is called cell-free fetal DNA. Uh, in this method, the fetal DNA that actually circulates freely in the maternal blood, that's analyzed. Maternal blood is sampled and then it is analyzed for the presence of SRY gene, which is the sex determining region on Y chromosome. If this is present within the blood, the baby is a male and if it is absent, then the baby is a female. So what you have to do? You have to answer this question. What was the impact of prenatal sex determination on the population structure of India and why was it banned in 1994? Good luck.